Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna to show you my favorite top 10 video camera hacks in Zoom video conferencing. We spend so much time in video conferences, we might as well have a little bit of fun with it. So what do I mean by video hacks? Well, the easiest way to explain is to look at a few examples. You could, for instance, show up in your next meeting looking like a Viking. This is one sure way to show your audience who's the authority. All hail Kevin. Or maybe you want something a little bit more casual. For example, maybe you wanna play a looping video in back of you. And Zoom includes two different looping backgrounds out of the box. And I'll show you how you can access a massive catalog of lots of different looping videos that you can use to make your video look more interesting. Now, we've been having a lot of fun so far, but maybe you need to get down to business and you wanna present in front of a PowerPoint presentation. You can do that and you don't even need any add-ins and you don't even need a green screen to be able to pull this off. And one of my favorites, I can turn my screen in front of me into a transparent or a glass whiteboard. So here, for example, I could just go ahead and start scribbling on my screen. Along with that, I can also throw up post-it notes if I wanna type in some notes. This way it'll make instruction a little bit easier to follow. I'm going to show you 10 different video hacks today and it'll probably take a little bit of time Time to learn how to do all of them. So I'm also going to show you a hack where you can pre-record yourself and then show that as your video feed in Zoom. So maybe you have a big meeting coming up where you have to give a speech, you can record it ahead of time and then simply play it back. You just have to watch out and make sure that no one asks you any questions in the middle of your speech. Ooh, that was pretty slick. And keep in mind, those were just a few examples of the hacks that I'll be showing you today. I'll walk you through step-by-step step how you can recreate each one of those hacks. What's really cool is a whole bunch of them don't require any add-ins. As long as you have Zoom, you can pull them off. Also, for a few of them, we're gonna have to download third-party software, and I'll walk you through which ones those are. If there are certain hacks that seem more interesting to you, you can use the timestamps down below in the description to jump around this video. All right, well, let's jump on the PC and let's recreate some of these hacks. Hack number one, you can use Snap Camera together with Zoom. If you've ever used Snapchat before on your phone, you can access similar lenses, characters, and effects on your PC. Let's say you wanna be a Viking, or maybe you wanna be a cat. You can very easily pull that off. This works on both Windows and Mac. To get started, head to the website snapcamera.snapchat.com. I've also included a link down below in the description. You could just click on that. Once you land on the website, click on download and run through the installation process. Once you finish installing, launch the application and you'll see an interface that looks like this. Right up above, I can preview what I look like once I apply the different lenses. Right down here, I can search for lenses or part of the fun is simply browsing around to see what all of the different options are. Here, for example, I could click on some of these featured ones and here I threw all these flowers on my face. Or maybe I wanna have these massive heart sunglasses with some red lipstick. Please don't take a screenshot of this and post it on the web. Also, right down here, I have all of these different categories with even more lenses. In the introduction, I showed myself in a Viking outfit, so here I could throw on my Viking helmet and now I have this massive beard. Right now, we're applying all of the different effects in Snap Camera, but how do we get it to Zoom? Well, let's jump over to Zoom and let's see how we can use these. Within Zoom, to use your new Snap camera, let's go down to the bottom left-hand corner where you have the camera icon. There is a carrot icon right next to that and click on that. Right here, you can select the camera that you wanna use. And there's now a new option called Snap Camera. This will take the feed from Snap Camera and this will bring it to Zoom. Go ahead and select this option. Once you have it selected, turn on your video feed and look at that. Your webcam in Zoom is now showing the output from Snap Camera. How cool is that? Video hack number two. You don't have to install third-party apps to get access to all of these filters. Zoom includes some of its own. To access these, let's go down to the bottom left-hand corner and click on this carrot icon next to the video camera. Right here, we see an option for choose video filter. Let's click on this. This opens up a view with a whole bunch of different video filters, and there are a whole host of different options. Let's say, for example, well, maybe you're meeting with a grumpy audience, and you wanna turn that frown upside down. You can use this meet happy filter, and look at that, that's gonna put anyone into a good mood. You also have other options like an analog TV. I've always wanted to be on the TV. 
And if I scroll all the way down here, here, oh, look at that, it's Google Glass V2. And this now brings us to hack number three. There are also a whole bunch of different studio effects and it's currently in beta that you can also apply. I'll turn off my Google Glass and let's check out these studio effects. Within studio effects, if my eyebrows weren't already big enough, I can make them even bigger. Here I'll apply even bigger and darker eyebrows. Check that out, it's almost like a forest above my eyes. If I look down a little bit, I'm always so clean shaven in my videos, I could throw on some facial hair. Look at that, that's what I look like when I have a beard, if I could even grow one. And if I go farther down for the second time today, you get to see me in lipstick. How lucky for you. Hack number four, I wanna show you how you can set up a looping video background. Right now, I just have this boring background. You see my wall, you see some acoustic panels. Let's spice things up with video. Right down here, just like we did previously, let's click on the carrot icon, except this time, let's click on choose virtual background. This once again drops us into backgrounds and filters, and this time we're on the virtual backgrounds tab. Here we see a few different images and we see two sample videos. Now of course you could click on this plus icon and you can add images and you could add videos. Now the only problem though is when you add a video, ideally you want a video that loops. If you have a video that doesn't loop, it'll keep cutting off maybe every five or 10 seconds or whatever the video length is for. But where do we find these looping videos? I'm going to show you a massive collection of looping videos that you can get using the app Microsoft PowerPoint. Let's jump into PowerPoint. Within Microsoft PowerPoint to access all of the looping videos, let's go up to the top ribbon and click on insert. Within insert, let's go down to pictures and click on the second option called stock images. If you didn't know about this, this is one of my favorite new features in Microsoft PowerPoint. It's also one of the best kept secrets hidden underneath that pictures icon. Here you get access to thousands of different royalty free images that you can use in your creations. Now we wanna use a looping video and up here across the top, there's an option for videos. Let's click on this. Within videos, I now have access to thousands of different looping videos that I can use within Zoom. Right up here at the top, I can choose one of these different categories, or I could even search for a specific type of image. Let's go with the natural category to see what's available. Right here, I see a bunch of different options. I'll go with this desert one. When I hover over, I see a quick preview of what it looks like. I'll select this one and then click on insert. I now have this video file on my slide, but how do we get this into Zoom? I'll right click on the video file and right down here, there's an option to save media as. I'll click on that and then I'll save this video file to my desktop. Back now within Zoom, I wanna apply my new looping video background. To use it right up here, I'll click on the plus icon and then let's click on add video. This opens up the Windows file picker and I'll select my new media file. Next, I'll click on open and look at that, I am now in the middle of the Sahara. And hack number five, you can now touch up your appearance. Now I don't really have that much of a skin routine, but it's good to know that I've now discovered the fountain of youth. To be able to use this, let's go down to the bottom left hand corner and once again, just like we've been doing all along, click on the carrot icon next to the camera. Right here, let's click into video settings. Within video settings, there's a checkbox next to touch up my appearance. This has been available for some time. Let's check this on. And now what's new is there's a slider next to it so we could decide how much we wanna to touch up our appearance. So maybe just a little bit, this buys me maybe another five years. And here I could go all the way back into my early 20s. Look at that, I look so much younger now. Hack number six, you can now present in front of a PowerPoint presentation. And the awesome thing about Zoom, especially compared to a lot of the competitors, you don't need any third-party add-ins, you don't need a green screen, as long as you have Zoom, you're able to do it. Right down on the bottom to access this, let's click on share screen. Within share screen, by default we land in the basic view. This functionality is hidden under the advanced tab. When we click on that, you'll see an option that says PowerPoint is virtual background. Let's click on this and then click on share. Next, navigate to where you have the PowerPoint on your computer and then double click on the file. And check that out, I am now in front of my PowerPoint presentation. Once again, no green screen, no other software required. Right here, I can click on my image and I can move where I appear on the screen. Also, if I wanna make myself larger, I can adjust the size of the rectangle. So here I'm a little bit larger in front of this. And maybe if I get a little bit closer to this cookie here, I can start eating it. 
Right down here, if I'm tired of showing my video, I can click on this ellipsis and I can split the video from the PowerPoint. So some pretty nice functionality that's included as part of Zoom. For the last four hacks, we're going to use software called OBS. This stands for Open Broadcaster Software. You can download it at obsproject.com. I've also included a link in the description. OBS is free, it's open source, and it works on all major platforms. With OBS, we'll be able to compose a scene, and just like with Snap Camera in the first hack, we'll send the output to Zoom. Go ahead and download and install OBS. Hack number seven, you can show your company logo or maybe your school mascot along with your title and your name on top of your video. Once you finish downloading and installing OBS, launch the application. When you land in OBS, you'll simply see a black screen. We need to start building out our scene. As a first step, let's add our video. Right down here in sources, click on the plus icon and let's add a video capture device. This is a fancy way of saying your webcam. This opens up a prompt, let's click on OK. Next, you can go through and choose the properties of your camera. I'm gonna go down and select my CamLink 4K. This now opens up my camera, this all looks good so I'll click on OK. Back on the main canvas, my camera looks really huge and I wanna resize it. I can right click on my new source and here I'll go to resize output and then click on yes. So here now I fit within the scene. Next, I wanna throw my company logo on top of my image. To do that, let's add another source. Right down here, let's click on the plus icon and within this menu, go up to image. Here, I'll just click on okay. This opens up properties for the image and here I can select the image file on my computer. I'll click on browse and then navigate to where you have the image on your computer. Here I've selected my image, I'll click on OK. Here now I see my new image on the screen, and here I see that it's on top of the list of sources. That means that it's the topmost layer. Here if I moved it down one, it would be the bottom layer and we can't see the logo anymore. We don't want that, so I'll move it right back up to the top, and this way it'll be the top layer. Here now that I have my image on the screen, I can adjust the size, so here I can make it a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll put it up here in the top left hand corner and then I can go move on the side of it. So now when I present in Zoom, not only will you see me, but you'll also see my company logo. We have to do one more thing before we can take this scene that we just composed and send it to Zoom. Down in the bottom right hand corner, we see a whole bunch of different controls. One of the options is called Start Virtual Camera. Let's click on this and then let's jump over to Zoom. Within Zoom, just like we did earlier, let's go to the bottom left hand corner and click on the carrot next to the camera. Right here we see all of our different cameras and just like we did with Snap Camera, let's now select the one called OBS Virtual Camera. Once you have that checked, let's turn on the camera. And look at this, here I am next to my logo and the resolution is pretty good on it. One thing you might notice is it looks like it's backwards. Why is that? Well, when you look at your video in Zoom, it appears as a mirror image but for all of your attendees in a meeting, it'll appear the proper way, just like we saw in OBS. As a quick tip, if you wanna build your own logo or your nameplate, you can do so directly in Microsoft PowerPoint. Simply build it out and once you're all done, select all of your different items and you can right click on it and then save it as a picture. Then when you're in OBS, select that picture and add it to your scene. Hack number eight, you can pre-record yourself and then play that recording in Zoom. For this, we're also going to use OBS. Here I am in OBS and I already have a source added with my video. We did that in a previous hack, so I won't show you how to do that again. Once you add your video, well first off, we have to record ourselves saying something. Over on the right hand side, you can click on start recording. So right now I'm recording and maybe I pre-record my speech or maybe I record myself just sitting here so it looks like I'm present in a meeting. Once you're all done, go down and click on stop recording. Now that the recording's done, we need to add it as another source. Over here under sources, click on the plus icon and instead of clicking on image like we did in the previous example, let's click on media source. Next, let's click on okay. And now let's navigate to where you saved the file on your computer. I've now selected my file. If you want the video to loop, check the box that says loop. If you're just content playing at one time, no need to check this. I'm gonna set it to loop. Once you're all done with the different settings, let's click on OK. Back within the main view of OBS, here now I can see my new media source. And it's the topmost layer, so we're gonna see the video playing here. Here I could pause it or I could stop the video. Once I'm ready to send this over to Zoom, over on the right hand side, just like we did before, I can start a virtual camera. And that's how I can show a pre-recorded video in Zoom. 
Hack number nine, this is the glass or the transparent whiteboard. And to pull this off, you just need to use some type of app that you can draw on. Here, I just have a super basic application. I have paint that comes with Windows, but you can use Microsoft OneNote. You can use the whiteboard app or Microsoft whiteboard, which is free to download. Any application will work. Just for simplicity, I'm going to use paint. Once you have Paint downloaded within OBS, let's go down to Sources and then click on the plus icon. For this, let's click on Window Capture. I'll leave the default name and click on OK. Here for the window, let's go down and choose the Paint window. Here I see Paint selected, that looks good, so let's click on OK. I now see the Paint window on my canvas and I'm going to adjust it so just the white area fills up the screen. So here I'll expand it and right now my screen is pretty much all white. Next, we wanna set this white color to a transparent color, so any markings on top of it show through. Over in Sources, let's click on Window Capture and then click on the option that says Filters. Within Filters, let's click on this plus icon and here let's select a color key. Basically, we're gonna say which color we wanna have be transparent and I wanna make white transparent in this case. Let's click on Color Key. Here, I'll just leave the default name and click on OK. This opens up a prompt where I can choose my key color type. Right now it's set to green, but I wanna set it to white. So I'll go down to custom color. Here I'll click on select color and let me go with white down here and then click on okay. This all looks good, so I'll close this. Here now you can see paint in front of me, but the white canvas is now transparent. So here, as I start painting in paint, it'll show through. And so in a sense now, I have my own transparent whiteboard in front of me. So I could write on the screen. I don't know, this is a pretty cool one. What do you think? And once again, to send this to Zoom, once you're all ready with your scene here in OBS, go down and click on Start Virtual Camera, and this will show up in your Zoom meeting. And this now brings us to our very last hack of the day. This is hack number 10. Don't be too sad, I'll have more videos like this in the future. In this one, I wanna show how you can have ending credits appear on your video. So maybe this way you can maybe have a subtle note to other people in the meeting that it's time to end. So many meetings run over, showing credits is the perfect way to get people to, you know, just move on to their next meeting. To add ending credits, let's go over to Sources and click on the plus icon. Right here, we first wanna add text. When I click on text, I'll leave the default name and then click on OK. Here I'll just paste in some sample text and then I'll click on OK. I see all the text on my screen, I'll resize this so it's not quite as big. And I'll place it over here on the left hand side. Now I want it to scroll like credits scroll. To have it scroll, I'll go down to text and then click on filters. Within filters, let's click on the plus icon and there's the option to scroll. Let's click on that. I'll leave the default name and click on OK. Within scroll, I can set a horizontal speed or a vertical speed. Now I want it to be credits that go from the bottom to the top, so I'll set a vertical speed on it. What's interesting is with the horizontal speed, let's say that you wanna have a ticker go across the bottom of the screen, you can use the horizontal speed to pull off something like that. I'll just go with this vertical speed. That looks great to me, so I'll click on close. And look at that. I now have credits going on next to me. So this way, or actually next to me on that side. So this will nudge people a little bit just to remind them that the meeting is ending. Just like we've been doing all along, to get this over into Zoom, click on start virtual camera, and then that'll show up as part of your video feed in Zoom. All right, well, those were my top video camera hacks in Zoom. If you have any others, I would love to hear about them down below in the comments. I'm always looking at expanding my arsenal of different tools that I have. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you wanna see me cover any other topics in the future on this channel, leave a note down below. All right, well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.